In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a file structure for our website. So when we're developing a website, there's lots of folders we will use to keep our work organized. So these are only just a suggestion. Remember, you can vary from this. These are the folders that I would use when I'm creating a project. And depending on the scale of the project, there might be more folders or less folders, but it'll give you some sort of structure to help you build and organize your website. So I've got a folder here called dynamic queries and I've already gone through and made some simple folders. You can see that I've got the CSS. In this one here will be things such as my global CSS. So when I open this, you can see this is some table information in here, but any CSS will go into this folder here and I'll be at a path to my CSS to make sure that they're organized. So if I have to make a cosmetic change, or a structural change through my CSS, I know exactly what folder it is and where the file is. I don't have to go digging through other folder structures or page folders, etc., to find them. The next one I've got is fonts. I always find it really important to have your fonts all in one place. This way you can keep them up to date. If I wanna add a new font to the um, site, I can do so. If I need to substitute a font, I can easily add it to the list. Um, you can archive old fonts. And so it's easy to transition between them. You know there's a relationship between your CSS and your font, and this way you can easily path through to your fonts from your CSS. Now with images, we need to be able to put our images into a folder. So depending on how you wanna organize your images, some people then do it by image type. Sometimes you have in images your structural ones, such as the logo, the favicon, things like that. So it depends on what you wanna place in images, but if all images go into one place, then it's easy to manage. Now you may also have subfolders in here for the pages. So images for particular pages are loaded into those folders and some are site images that may be common across all pages. Oh, the includes is where I normally put um, things such as my functions.php or anything that I need to include into a PHP page. This way they're all in one place, easy to manage. JavaScript, so if you write any JavaScript files, they live in this folder here. And the last one is vendor. Now the vendor is when I'm using third party applications, like so if I'm using Bootstrap, um, if I'm using Charts.js, if I'm using jQuery, Font Awesome, links, things like that. So if I bring down Font Awesome rather than linking to it live on the website, I put them all in this area here. If I'm using CSS that is built by other people, like maybe um, animations, etc., I also place them into this area as well. So this is a very good folder for third party vendor work. It also makes it easy to update and check that you've got the most current versions um, and you can download and substitute them in there. And once you've done all that, you can then get to the point where you can create your first page, which could be index.php or HTML, depending on what you're working on. And one of the first things I'm gonna be working on today um, a little bit later is going to be dynamic queries. So I hope this has helped you get an understanding of the different types of folders you could use in your projects. They're easy to set up. Um, if you don't end up using them, you can delete them before you upload it to the live web server. But if you did find this tutorial useful, give it a like. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and also have a look around for other useful PHP and web programming tutorials. And I'd like to wish you all the best in your programming journey.